All right, so this is a, a little clip um, about how to, how to work with moles and exactly what a mole is. Um, if you do chemistry, you'd probably be okay with this stuff, um, but if you don't do chemistry at A-level, some of this stuff might get a little bit confusing. I just want to do this just to, to clear up a few things. Um, so mole, little m, O-L, symbol, um, is the amount of substance. Um, probably the best way to think of this is if you were doing a recipe, if you were making, uh, for example, a cake, you would want the exact amount of substances. So you would say three eggs plus 200 grams of flour plus 200 grams of butter. For example, everything would be in proportion. You'd need to know the exact amount. And when we're working with um, substances and chemicals, we also need to know the exact amount of things. Now, if we're going to work with um, different atoms, different elements, um, we need to know how many atoms are in a certain amount. And it turns out a mole is just a number, which is that number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, or if you like, um, if I write the whole thing out, that, which is also known as Avogadro's number. What does that mean? Well, if we take um, the example of, let's take carbon, if you look at carbon on the periodic table, it has these little numbers next to it, okay, 12 and 6. The atomic number 6 tells you how many um, protons there are in the nucleus, also tells you how many electrons there are. This top number, the relative molecular mass, or relative atomic mass in this case, tells you the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay. Now if you take that top number, which in carbon's case is 12, 12 grams of carbon would contain that many carbon atoms. So we'd say that one mole of carbon is 12 grams of carbon. Okay. Um, if we took oxygen, relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So one mole of oxygen would be 16 grams mole of oxygen. Okay. Now it does get a little bit more tricky depending on what you're doing. For example, oxygen, hopefully we know, doesn't um, go around on its own normally. Um, it goes around as a, a diatomic molecule, O2. So if you were talking about a mole of O2, because there are two oxygen molecules in it, there, you need to have twice as much, or 32 grams equals one mole of O2. So when you're thinking about moles, make sure you're clear whether you're talking about the individual atom or um, if it's a molecule um, such as O2 or H2 or F2, whatever it may be. Make sure you're clear on what you're talking about. Is it a, uh, a mole of the molecule or is it a mole of the atom? Okay, so that's, that's the basic principle behind a mole. When would we actually work with them? Well, if you're making um, a solution up, so if you wanted to dissolve um, a chemical, let's take um, another classic one we were working with, sodium chloride, okay, and we wanted to make a one molar solution of sodium chloride, how would we do it? Well, first of all you'd work out the relative formula mass, which means, simply means what's the relative atomic mass of sodium plus the relative atomic mass of chlorine. Now if you look these up on the periodic table, it turns out that sodium has a relative atomic mass of 23 and chlorine, depending on what you look at, has got a relative atomic mass of 35.5. Why 35.5? Why doesn't it have a whole number? Um, well chlorine is actually made up of, the chlorine that we normally find is made up of two different isotopes. Now an isotope just means it's got a different number of neutrons in it. There are some chlorine atoms that have uh, a relative atomic mass of 35, but about a quarter of all the chlorine atoms you find have got a relative atomic mass of 37. So when we sort of average these things out, if you took an average number, it turns out to be about 35.5. So that's why it seems to be an odd number with an odd number of... Um, it, it's not a whole number. Okay, It doesn't matter to us. That's just where the number comes from. So... Sodium uh, 23, chlorine 35.5. So if you add them together, the relative molecular mass, because it's a molecule, of sodium chloride is 
23 plus 35.5 equals um, 58.5. So if we turn that into grams, 58.5 grams is the same as saying one mole of sodium chloride. So if I measured out 58.5 grams of salt, sodium chloride, I would have one mole. How do I turn that into a solution? Well, if I were to put that one mole into a litre of water, so I've dissolved that in one litre of water, I would then have what we'd call a one molar solution. So I'd have one mole of sodium chloride per litre. Okay? Which is the same as saying, if we use the, the, the way that chemists usually would write this and the way that we should write it is, we don't usually use litres. Um, this sort of symbol L, it can be a bit confusing. It can sometimes look like a one um, or it can sometimes look like something else, like a, a slash. So we don't usually use that. What we would use is decimeters. And I'll, I'll deal with decimeters on, a, on another clip, if you're not sure what decimeter is. Again, we don't actually like using this slash. It could maybe get confused with a one. Um, and so instead what we do... Oh, sorry, decimeters cubed. Um, instead of writing it like that, one mole per decimeter cubed, we could write it like this one mole per decimeter cubed. Again, if you're not sure on this um, notation, why that means per, um, you'll need to watch the clip. All of these things are the same. One mole per litre, one mole per litre, except using decimeters cubed here, one mole per decimeter cubed. It's exactly the same thing. In fact, we can simplify that even further and simply say a one molar solution capital M for molar. So one molar solution of salt, of sodium chloride, sorry, would be uh, 58.5 grams dissolved in one litre of water, which would be a one molar solution. Okay, fine. What if I wanted to make it a two molar solution? Well, I'd simply double the mass of sodium chloride. What if I wanted to make it a half molar solution? I could either put half as much sodium chloride in, or I could use twice as much water, I could use two litres of water. Either way, it doesn't matter, it's just a proportion, okay? If we try it with something else, let's try it with one that um, you may be familiar with, let's try it with um, a carbohydrate, so this would be um, a hexose, perhaps it's glucose, C6H1O6. If I wanted to make a one molar solution of hexose, like this, one molar solution of glucose, sorry, um, I would add up, I'd find out the relative atomic mass, so carbon is 12, hydrogen is 1, oxygen is 16. To work out the relative molecular mass, I would say there are 6 carbon, 6 times 12, 72. There are 12 hydrogens, 12 times 1 is 12. And there are 6 oxygens, so 6 times 16, 6 times 10 is 60, 6 times 6 is 36. Oops, 96. If I add all of these together, it gives me my relative atomic molecular mass of glucose, which is 180. In other words, 180 grams of glucose dissolved in one litre of water would give you a one molar solution of glucose. Okay. If I wanted a 0.5 molar solution of glucose, I could simply add half as much. I could add... 90 grams. If I wanted a 0.1 mole solution, I could add 0.1 or a tenth of my original mass. So all I'm doing is changing between these two things as I feel like it. Okay. So I can make any different solution by just measuring out the correct amount of um, solute in grams and dissolving it in either a litre of water or any other fraction of water I want to make it.